In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at something that's interesting about closures. I want to create a couple of global variables here, var x, y, and funks. And funks is going to be basically an array of functions. So I want to create a little loop here. We'll say x equal to 0, and then x less than 5, and then we'll increment x on each iteration. And then we're simply going to say funks.push and we're going to pass a function in here. It's going to be a very simple function. All it's going to do is do a console.log x. So we're going to basically create five functions, push them onto an array, and then we're going to iterate over that array, and we are going to execute those functions. So we'll do y less than 5, y plus plus, and then we'll come in here and we'll actually say funks and we'll reference the function with the y and then we'll actually execute it. And so this will actually loop over all five functions and we'll output the value of x to the screen. Now if we reload our web page here, we're going to see that we get five outputted five times. Now a lot of folks don't expect that. They expect that basically we're going to see 0 through 4 outputted to the console. So why didn't that happen? See this x here in the console.log? This x actually refers to the x defined on the global scope. And so we do loop through x five times. Ultimately, when x is, is uh, no longer less than 5, we exit the loop. But this x in the function that's being created always refers to the x declared in the global scope. So even though we've pushed this function five times onto the array with a console log x, when we actually execute the function down here, this x is still referring to the x defined on the global scope. And so the last value of x is five, since that's what it had been incremented up to and then exited the for loop. So if we wanted to fix this so that we actually got the result that we were expecting, what we have to do is introduce a new scope. So we come in here and we're going to create an iffy. An iffy is, stands for an immediately invoked function expression. If we remember about JavaScript, the only thing that introduces a new scope is a function. JavaScript is not block scoped. So if we want to have a new scope, we actually have to set up a function like this. And then we're going to declare a variable here called r. And we're going to set r equal to x. And then instead of console log x, we're going to console log r. So here's what we've done here. Within our new scope, we have this new variable called r. We assign whatever the current value of x is at the moment that this function executes. And then we're referencing r down here um, to actually do the output to the screen. So if we save that, we come back here to our web browser and we reload, we're going to see that it outputs 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's because it's outputting the value of r that was assigned, whatever the value of x was, when this actual iffy was executed with a new scope. The key to using closures in JavaScript is to remember, to remember the scope in which the variable was defined. It's always going to pull the value from the scope in which it is defined. In this case, x is defined on the global scope, and it had incremented up to 5. So when we executed it down here, it still had the value of 5.